12 News exclusives, a satanic sexual encounter leaves a man with nearly 300 stab wounds. 12 News' Brendan Conway is live on Milwaukee's east side where the victim was found half naked, cut and bleeding. Now, Jason, the uh, police say they found the victim in the middle of the street, that he was bleeding badly. They say they follow his blood trail through the street, up the sidewalk and up the stairs of this third floor apartment building where they say the victim says he spent two days tied up and tortured. What happened in this third floor apartment on Milwaukee's east side over the weekend is almost too bizarre to believe. But court records lay out a story of sex, violence, and possible satanic activities. According to a search warrant obtained by 12 News, an 18-year-old man came to Milwaukee from Arizona to meet with a woman that he met online. It's unclear what he hoped would happen, but he tells police after arriving by bus, he spent two days in the apartment tied up, getting cut, slashed, and stabbed. By the time he escaped, doctors say he had more than 300 wounds covering his body. 21-year-old Rebecca Chandler was arrested at the scene. According to court documents, she told detectives she was having sex with the victim and that the cutting was consensual, but that it got out of hand. Chandler told police that her roommate of a few months, Scarlett, did the majority of the cutting. Chandler says she doesn't know Scarlett's real name, but she thinks Scarlett is involved in the occult. According to a list of things seized from the apartment, there were a number of occult-type items, including a book, the Necromantic Ritual Book, which claims to teach consciousness with the angel of death on an intimate level. A neighbor who didn't want to go on camera out of fear told me he heard the suspect escape. He says it sounded like someone was running for their life. Police say they found a pool of blood inside the apartment, and there are still blood stains on the banisters and walls. 21-year-old Chandler has no criminal record. Both her and the other suspect in the case are being held in Milwaukee County Jail awaiting formal charges. I talked to the victim on the phone this afternoon. He did not want to talk about his ordeal, but he says he is recovering from his injuries. Reporting live on the east side, Brendan Conway, WISN 12 News. Prosecutors are reviewing the contents of computers to unravel the motive behind a satanic sex attack on Milwaukee's east side. Colleen Henry joins us from the site of the attack with new information. And Colleen, you talked to witnesses and the district attorney who says the case poses some unusual challenges. Well, Kath, the apparent victim in this case does not want to prosecute, and the suspects who live behind me say that the episode was consensual. That makes what investigators find on those computers even more critical to their decision on whether to prosecute. Mm, he was cut, he was given breaks between cuts like he wanted, and he was given water when he asked for it, and he was, giving, he was given medication to pain reliever. And during that time, did he ask to be released? Yes. And did you release him? No, because that was not what we agreed to. News was there 11 days ago when prosecutors released the woman behind the rendezvous while they continued to investigate. She didn't want her face shown, but told 12 News she and her roommate invited the 18 year old Arizona man to their east side apartment for a satanic sex encounter. That after three hours, he broke free and threatened to kill her. I ended up getting kicked in the head and stuff like that, and I was stabbing him too. And there's just so much blood all over it. Jay Lindsay works nearby and was waiting for a bus that night. Guy in, is walking in the middle of the street. He has like a rope tied around his neck, and his shirt and pants are just covered in blood. He looked like a zombie when we saw him. Staff at the nearby county, Claire, helped with towels as police arrived. He didn't have no, any shoes no, or yeah, socks no. on, and his feet were bleeding. Even though he left a trail of blood in the stairwell and sidewalk, the victim's family told 12 News he doesn't want to prosecute. I don't blame him. Like, I would want it to all go away, too. You want to go have a good time, and something like that happens. You meet crazy, satanic women that want to sacrifice you or whatever it is. Prosecutors hope computer communication between the women and the man will clarify what expectations were before the incident and may help resolve whether the women acted in self-defense, as they say. Were you surprised to learn that he told police he was held against his will? Yes, because that's a lie.
Do you believe a crime was committed? No. I believe it's just something that got out of hand for both parties, and that's it. Now, the DA says consent may not actually be a defense, and if prosecutors decide to charge in this case, they can get a court order to force that Arizona man to return to Wisconsin to testify. They say a decision on charges may not come until mid-December. At Astor and Knapp, Colleen Henry, WISN 12 News. Courtney Jarrell it was a math teacher in Utah. She's 22 years old, and she has been accused uh, of raping a 17-year-old female student uh, in the high school. So it's a 22-year-old woman teacher. Yes, female teacher. Who with a female student. Yes. Now, um, it, the age of consent in Utah is 17, and uh, it, it, but there is uh, one thing that you should keep in mind. If someone is 10 years older than 17, then it is not considered consent. So it would be statutory rape under those circumstances, yes. but under these circumstances, it's not. It's not. Because she's 17 and the teacher's only 22. Yes. So it doesn't fall under that exemption. But this is not statutory rape. This no. is forcible rape. It's right? considered forcible rape. Uh, she's been charged with forcible rape, okay? So this is all alleged as well. Um, and uh, there are two charges object rape and forcible sexual assault. Man. That's the teacher, right? Yes, that's the teacher. I, this is a trippy story, man. It's. It, Look, it's obviously very unique, something we're not used to. Uh, lesbian rape is not a story we cover very often. And it's a teacher on a student and forcible rape with an object, et cetera. It's, it's shocking, I, you know. I'm literally, in all the years of doing the news, never heard of a case like that. Yeah, neither have I. And also their ages are so close, you know, 17 and 22. And there are two women, and, you, and look, it's not good to stereotype people, but you look at her picture and you think, there's no way that that's a rapist, right? But you never know. I think that's the lesson to take away from this. Of course, she has to be uh, tried, and you have to see if she's actually guilty. Definitely, um, but, yeah. but, you know, you see her image, and let's say she is found guilty, it kind of proves that you can't judge on face alone, you know? Uh, I mean, these, if you were going to pick who is the rapist in the school, I don't think there's a person in the world that would have picked her, right? And again, she has to have a trial. We don't know what the particular circumstances are, and it could be very complicated. But, uh, but if the charges are proven true, it's one of the most surprising rape cases I have ever seen in my life. Just shocking. Shock and disbelief among students at Riverton High School over sex abuse allegations against a popular teacher and basketball coach. I know all the kids really liked her and she was a really energetic outgoing person everybody loved her like my parents even were way shocked because my parents loved her too they thought she was a great teacher 22 year old courtney Jarrell taught math and coached the sophomore girls basketball team prosecutors say between february and march of this year Jarrell had sex with a 17 year old student the alleged encounter happened at Jarrell's home I heard that they were texting, and I know Ms. Jarrell would always go to her basketball games. The Jordan School District says Jarrell was suspended almost immediately after a parent complained about inappropriate behavior. A spokeswoman who declined to go on camera says the district has a moral conduct policy it takes seriously. She says every employee is required to sign off on that policy. I was just surprised because I've... It's never happened at our school that I know of, so it's just like a big shock that... It would happen here, so. The school district says Jarrell had been at Riverton High for eight months. This was her first teaching job. A Louisville woman is indicted on charges of rape, assault, unlawful imprisonment, and robbery. Police say Wisdom Duncan attacked a former co-worker that she thought had stolen from her. WLKY's Aaron Haynes is live at the Metro Corrections with more on this unusual case. Aaron? Yeah, Rick, Wisdom Duncan, also known as Sunshine, was arrested about a week and a half ago after police say she accused another woman of stealing two TVs from her home, then beat and raped her. 
They got into an altercation where the suspect hit the victim uh, several times in the face and eyes. Metro police say that fight was just the beginning of a brutal rape and mutilation at the hands of Wisdom Duncan. Police say Duncan and the female victim had worked together as strippers in the past. According to an arrest warrant, Duncan invited the woman to her home in the 500 block of Camp Street, then threatened her at gunpoint. She ordered her to strip. Uh, put in a chair, tied her up. While the woman was bound to the chair, the report says Duncan stole $200 from her purse, then pulled out a sharp object. She subsequently took some type of sharp object and cut her around the chest, breast area at that point. Then police say Duncan raped the woman with the sharp object, causing internal injuries. A report says Duncan pulled the woman, still tied to the chair, to the closet, wrapping a rope-type fabric around her neck, tying the other end to the closet rod, choking the victim, leaving her gasping for air. She shut the closet door and left her there for some time. Later, police say Duncan untied the woman from the chair. The report says Duncan told the woman she would kill her and her family if she tried to leave then tied her to her own wrist with a belt, forcing her to lay beside her in bed. Apparently, the suspect went to sleep and the victim was able to escape at that point. Now, Duncan is being held on $100,000 full cash bond. Now, police say that, according to the arrest warrant, the victim had nothing to do with the stolen television. Lurid and terrifying allegations about sexual advances in violent attacks in a local home. Now the woman just arrested tells Wesh to don't believe a word of it. Linda Vaughn's locked up tonight. The allegations against her are brutal and bizarre, and she's talking exclusively to Wesh 2's Gail Pascal Brown. 48-year-old Linda Vaughn sits here in the Marion County Jail, charged with kidnapping, aggravated battery, and theft. It involves a 34-year-old woman from Ocala, a friend, Linda says, for about a year and a half. There was nothing sexual, and I stand by that 100%. But according to the Wednesday arrest report, Linda Vaughn made sexual advances toward the 34-year-old victim in Vaughn's Bellevue home. She allegedly tried to light the victim's hair on fire, took money, IDs, and a credit card from her. Until, quote, you get me some money. No, absolutely. I've never had her purse or had possession of it. Uh, that is absolutely not true. The arrest report says Vaughn continued to make sexual advances toward her, and when the victim refused, Linda Vaughn got angry and made the victim lick a wound on Vaughn's arm. You told her to lick a wound on your arm? No. And then you said you had AIDS? No, ma'am. I did not say that. What and this is the first time I've heard that. The arrest report says the only way the victim got away was by coaxing Linda Vaughn to go to a bar, and that's when the victim called 911. She left my house. Right out the front door, I told you the windows were open. She walked out of there and erratically hauled butt, and she was yelling something out the window. It was the last time I saw her. That's for sure. Experts say the stakes couldn't be higher for the female state trooper who conducted this roadside cavity search of two North Texas women captured on dash cam video. As we first reported Friday, a Dallas County grand jury indicted trooper Kelly Hellison on two counts of sexual assault and two counts of official oppression. In the course of doing her job by going beyond what the law allowed her to do, she could find herself as a registered sex offender for the rest of her life if she's convicted. Peter Schulte is a Dallas attorney and a reserve police officer. It's all going to come down to who does the jury believe. Hellison's attorney says his client passed a tough lie detector test 
and neither assaulted nor fondled Angela and Ashley Dobbs. Experts say this cavity search done on the side of the highway really raises the question of how the trooper was trained in the first place. How did she even get this idea that this was okay? Is this an issue that, you know, is that she learned from a field training officer? I mean, where is the problem? DPS says any search that unreasonably invades the bodily integrity of a citizen is in violation of the Fourth Amendment and is therefore in violation of DPS policy. The agency fired Hellison and she is appealing. The grand jury also indicted Trooper David Farrell on a theft charge after Angela Dobbs complained her prescription bottle of painkillers went missing after the search. DPS says Farrell remains suspended pending the outcome of an administrative investigation. Schulte says the indictments against both troopers in this case may place other investigations in jeopardy. Any cases that are set for trial involving these two troopers are going to have to get disposed of because the DA's office can't sponsor their testimony. Everybody, glad you're with us tonight. I'm Darren Kramer. I'm Ann Nyberg. Tonight, a Hamden woman is facing abuse charges after police say she assaulted four mentally disabled people who lived in her home. They say the victim suffered everything from broken bones to sexual abuse. News 8's Mark Robbins spoke with the suspect's attorney earlier tonight. Hamden police in February started to investigate the activities inside that home here on Ridge Road. Wednesday, they arrested a 74-year-old woman who lives there. She's the caretaker of four adults with disabilities. Police allege she's been abusing them. Victoria Moreau has been charged with a variety of offenses, including sexual assault in the fourth degree. Several years ago, the state of Connecticut gave Moreau the responsibility of taking care of three women and one man, all with mental disabilities. One resident of this quiet Hamden neighborhood spoke of seeing Moreau and her clients, but never noticed anything peculiar or seeing any signs of abuse. I knew nothing of Victoria. I just know that there were some disabled people who lived there as well, and I would see them outside sometimes, taking out the trash. Police allege Moreau would make her clients sleep on the floor and hit them with a cane if they got up. She's also alleged to have locked them in a closet and given them baths in extreme hot or cold water. News 8 spoke exclusively with her attorney. Um, at the appropriate time, uh, she's going to put the state to its burden of proof. Uh, she's going to plead not guilty. In addition to Victoria's arrest, police arrested her daughter, Wendy, and charged her with risk of injury to a minor, disorderly conduct, and interfering with police. She, too, is expected to plead not guilty. I can only ask the, uh, the, the, the populace to withhold judgment until all the 
facts are out in this matter, and I think that once all the facts are out in this matter, she will be vindicated. Both women are out on bond, and the four adults allegedly abused have gone back into the state's custody. Victoria and Wendy Moreau are scheduled to make their next court appearance later this month. Sandy woman is accused tonight of giving teenage boys drugs and forcing them into sex. Police say two separate incidents happened in Kathy English's home just over a year ago, and both incidents involved 16-year-old boys. ABC 4's Annie Cutler is in Sandy, where police have been looking for the suspect tonight. Annie? That's right. Police officials are looking for this woman, Kathy English. She's been charged with forcible sodomy, which is a first-degree felony. So is rape, which English is also charged with. Police say one of the victims is her daughter's boyfriend. Police say the teen told investigators English had given him some drugs. He also told officers he witnessed English sexually assaulting another friend of his. All of this happening a year ago. We had a major time delay um, in the case due to the fact that it wasn't reported to us to five to six months later after it actually occurred. And then another six month wait for the DNA uh, results to come back. Investigators went to English's home yesterday, but she wasn't there. She still was not home this evening. Some of her neighbors were shocked to learn of the charges against her. Doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem like that would have be possible. But police disagree. We're going off of some um, eyewitness accounts along with concrete evidence that we have uh, gathered. And according to these documents, police officials do have a warrant out for English's arrest. Her bail has already been set at $100,000. Close to home in Sandy, Annie Cutler, ABC4 News. Terry. Uh, Annie, thank you very much. Now, we just got word from police just moments ago in our newsroom here that English has been taken into custody within the last few minutes. We're told that family members turned her in because they were afraid for her safety. Russians do not mess around. No. One particular Russian woman uh, is now uh, on trial for raping ten men. What's with Russian women? No, no, no. She's, she's not kidding. This woman is serious. What she would do is she would go to bars and she would meet men, right? And she would invite them back to her place. Now, from the report, she sounds like an attractive woman. So the men would go, right? Um, they would go back to her place and she would give them like a roofie and it would cause them to fall asleep for up to 24 hours. While they were asleep, she would wrap like a rope around their penis so it stays erect, and then she would rape them. That's unbelievable. That's unbel First of all, I didn't know that that would uh, keep a penis erect. I didn't know that either. Never tried it. Uh, but obviously David Carradine believed, of it, believed in it. I mean, uh, no disrespect, but I mean, I say that because apparently some dudes do that. I mean, that that's a way of keeping hard. Right. So, and, and while you were passed out on roofies, who knew that? Okay, but I guess you learned through hard experience. Hard experience. So, uh, sorry. Sorry. Anyway, it's a serious story. Uh, so uh -huh. she did this to ten guys. She did this to ten guys. Um, they would wake up twenty-four hours later uh, in the hospital, and they would have just severe pains in their genitals and they had um, poisoning from the drugs that they were given and everything and um, it's funny because ten of the there are ten uh, victims right one of them refuses to press charges and this is what he says he says he likes hot women and he thought the assault was great and that's the thing that blew me away apparently this is a hot brunette who's doing this right and you know that guy said hey I, I just wish I was awake for it Right. You didn't have to drug me. And this thing, her, the drug she gave is actually a little stronger than roofies. Mm -hmm. And it, some poison still remains in your system afterwards. So obviously she's going to get prosecuted to, you know, to no end here. You would imagine 10 rapes. I mean, these are like we before we used to have a debate about whether you could rape men. Mm -hmm. This is rape. Yes, There's no totally. question. Because they're not awake and you've tied a rope around their penis and you poison them. 
And past that, I mean, if ever there was no question, this is it. And I, I'm, and this is the second story we've done of a Russian woman raping men. Right. A, a, in the same way. But remember, we did a story about rape in Russia in general. And isn't it very common? It, sexual harassment was, okay. and, and sometimes sexual assault in the workplace was very, very common in Russia in that study that we had done earlier. Mm -hmm. But this is a whole nother level, you know. And I, I, I mean, I hope, I guess I hope it's not a phenomenon that catches on. Mm -hmm. And I don't see why they needed to do it. In the, in the hairdresser case where she got the assailant that was trying to rob her, kicked his ass, and then raped him, he's like, look, I was down for it for the first couple of times, <laughs> right? And then she raped him over and over, if you remember, until he was exhausted or couldn't function anymore. Right. And in this case, again, it's, I mean, if you're a hot Russian woman, you don't need the roofies. You'll be surprised how many people will say, Da. But I think I think maybe this is what her fetish is, because you know how people have crazy fetish, fetishes. Maybe her fetish is to right, drug men and sleep with them, tie ropes around their penises. Now, the thing that drives me even crazier about it, and like I keep going back to it, and I know this is wrong, but I keep thinking, really, is she going to get punished as much as men who would do this? Because to me, like a man who does that, put away for life. Okay, right. a woman who does that. I'm still struggling, and I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and I think to myself, "Yeah, yeah, right." But uh, they all came back to our house already. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's so unnecessary and gratuitous. Believe me, if you're a halfway attractive Russian woman and they came back to your house, all you had to do, say was you're open for business. You didn't have to go to the super roofies. Man, this world is full of crazy, crazy people. And apparently a decent number of them live in Russia. Bizarre reports coming from Zimbabwe indicate that gangs of women are raping men and taking off with their semen in used condoms. The Kenyan Daily Post reports that several men have written statements with the police about incidents where they've been raped by a woman at gunpoint. The way it went down was that they would be offered a lift by these attractive women, usually two, who would then drive them to a lonely spot at gunpoint hand them a condom, and order them to have sex with one of them. At the end of the ordeal, the women would carefully retrieve the condom and drive off into the night with the raped man's semen. Late last year, a motorist had a minor accident, but when police arrived on the scene, it suddenly turns into a criminal investigation after they find 31 used condoms in the car, four of them with what appears to have male semen. The man leads police to three women who are said to be the owners of the car involved. Superstitious locals believe that the motive of the rapes is to collect the male sperm for occult rituals that lead to great wealth. The lifestyle of the three arrested women and the fact that several men have come forward to tell police that they were popular in night spots in Harare, where they were known to frequently insist on buying men drinks, has just added fuel to this belief. In Russia, a lone woman rapist has been charged in court where she admitted to raping a man for three days. So severe were the man's wounds from the rape ordeal that he was forced to seek treatment in a hospital shortly after the woman released him. It has also been reported that a gang of women in a certain part of Mobasa are grabbing men and raping them. Some locals think that the motive may be to spread disease as a way of exerting some kind of revenge against men in general. Those who are said to be involved will not talk about it, let alone agree to meet with the reporter who may publicize their story. Yeah, that, that was pretty strange.